Mark Mills, you will. The floor is yours. Um, okay, so my project was the photolysis of methyl iodide, otherwise known as iodine, iodomethane. Um, so why investigate methane iodide, methyl iodide in the first place? So in organic chemistry, um, it is known to be a, the carbon of the methyl iodide is um, susceptible to a nucleophilic attack, and iodine is also a strong leaving group, so it's really easy to methylate products using this molecule. And then um, also it's very small, so it's slightly easier to um, demonstrate in, you know, that lab. So the products are easier to like interpret than a like triatomic um, like model. So like um, ethane, ethyl iodide would be significantly more complicated than methyl iodide. So that's part of the reason why we chose this. So what my simulations model is pump. Oh, oh my gosh. Pump probe spectroscopy. So it's a one femtosecond pulse that splits into two like sub pulses. One pulse is the pump, which excites the electron, and the other one is the probe, which detects it. And then, so the pulse is significantly shorter than the relaxation of it. So you can excite the electron without having it interfere with the re relaxation of the electron. So that is also the reason we investigate it. And different things that you can change are that the configuration, that, or, well, the configurations that you can change are the amplitude, the phase, the polarization, and the frequency. So those are just things that you can tweak to make it exactly the way you want to detect it. Um, so after it uh, excites, it relaxes into two different spin states. Uh, so the spin one half and the spin three fourths. Spin one half has a higher energy than the spin three fourths does. Um, and in literature, they're denoted as the I stars, the spin one half, and then the regular I is the spin three, four, three halves. And so the higher energy is seen here. And these are just the labels for the um, potential energy surfaces that we investigated. And this is the reaction barrier for just the breaking of the um, methyl iodide. So I'm not going to get into methodology, but it's all here. OK, well, <laughs> uh, this is the initial wave function. Um, so it has a, a few different components to it. Um, so the, okay, I don't know how in depth to go. But uh, we have the Hamiltonian, the actual uh, equation for the natural wave function, um, the um, potential energy surface calculations, as well as how I converted the temperature in relation to momentum. So here are my uh, videos, that's the word. Uh, so this is the excited electron, and the electron is relaxing. This uh, right here is the overall probability of the electron to be in the two different potential energy surfaces. And then these little humps here are the uh, wave packets propagating as, um, the, uh, as a function of the bond between the iodine and the carbon. So as you can see, and this, this is temperature zero with a momentum of zero. So as you can see, as the, it propagates, the um, bottom one, which is the spin three has propagates significantly faster. Then the one on the in, it's uh, too many lines on this graph. Uh, so you have three different types of potential. So what is it? Um, yeah. The green lines. I mean, the uh, green lines, which looks like a potential. Yeah, there's two different. There's, so there's a, um, okay, so it's a, um, so there's, these two here are relaxed to the same state, whereas the only, there's only one state here. And off the top of my head, I can't tell you there's um, a, but it's in my, it's in my report, I can't remember right now though. Um, there's different ways to get to that state, so there's, um, I think it's, shoot, I can't tell you, but um, it relaxes into two different, two different states. So this state and this state, they both relax in the same way. But what is your potential? Can you show it on, on equations? Like in your slide with equations, you, there are uh, potentials like uh, V of X. In, in are you talking about this? Yes. Can you explain what's the difference between V sub 0, V sub 1, V sub 2, V sub 3? Oh, so this is three lines based on these terms of four coming? Four. Can you just briefly comment what's the difference of this? Uh, V not V1, V2, V3, and how it relates to 
the question of Professor Pien. Wouldn't it be the well depth? Um, so the, the variations in the well depth would be um, what causes it to relax differently? Maybe yes, but you may highlight that there are four different potentials. Oh, well, yeah, you're... And all, uh, those four different potentials is what you are showing. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. But what's the difference between them? Why do you need four different potentials? Because they relax in different manners. There's one that's uh, like a horizontal, I think that's what it's called, a transition. And then there's one that's, um, I can't remember the it would really help if I can remember the word right now. Um, but there's different types of relaxation. So there's one that. Um, I mean, conservative and dissociated? What's you can do? No, it's different. Um, I can't remember. Uh, but it relaxes in different manners. So there's just the three different lines, and then they end up at different spin states. Mm -hmm. So. So different products that are similar in energy. Yeah, basically. So two of them result in the same energy, and then one of them results in a different one. So there's three lines. The fourth line, I'm not sure what you're talking about. This is the, um, this is the electron. This is, these are the two probabilities. So the black and the green are the probabilities. This is the overall distribution, and these are the three lines that we're talking about. This is the um, non-excited state. I guess so. There's no since it's excited. There's no electrons on this non um, yeah okay well we'll continue so the second one is a temperature of negative 194 degrees celsius so the initial peanut that i chose was 10 and so as you can see it's starting to get a little bit closer um for the distribution as it's um propagating they start to get similar and similar um i'm not gonna let this go to the end because we have a time limit so as it as the temperature increases, they become more and more similar, basically mimicking each other, but the distribution remains the same. And I thought that was weird, so um, we investigated it further. So this time up here is a little off, so it's actually going from zero to further rather than from negative <laughs> to nothing uh, because it was simulated differently previously. So if we let the temperature oscillate the um, molecule beforehand, uh, it wouldn't eventually will excite, um, the probability distribution will, will vary differently than it did at the same temperature um, previously. So yeah, this one's a little bit longer. So this is the same simulation except for this one was isolating previously. So you can see that it's very different looking than what is, it was here where this one had nice lines, this one has very different, you know, oscillating features to it, and they probably at roughly the similar time, but still a little different. So if I were to do this further, I would allow it to oscillate previous to the excitation to allow it to actually simulate the molecule correctly. So, anyways, um, my conclusions were: uh, temperature increases the rate at which the I star state propagates, and then um, the propagation ratio varies if it's allowed to oscillate before it's excited. So. That's it. Okay, let's start the lesson. So, any questions?